you know, what kind of Chicago historian would I be to bring you through Bronzeville and not show you where Aretha Franklin did her thing? I think the name in and of itself, Bronzeville, calls for Inquisition, right? You know, you've heard about Chicago, you heard about the Bean, you know, maybe you're not familiar with Bronzeville. And so it's like, what's that? Welcome to About the Journey. I'm your host, Onika Raymond, a travel journalist and member of Marriott Bonvoy. This season, I'm uncovering the lesser known sides of six iconic cities. In my years of travel, I found there is no better way to see a city than through its neighborhoods and the people who call them home. So I'll be meeting up with In The Know locals to show me what makes their homes one of a kind, from the sights, sounds, and flavors, to the hidden gems, and so much more. This week, we're exploring Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood, the birthplace of gospel music and Black History Month, also known as the Black Metropolis. Bronzeville would be the oldest black neighborhood in Chicago. And so by that definition, we, we have the oldest black churches, black civic organizations. Today, we're taking a tour of Bronzeville with Chicago historian Sherman Dilla Thomas. Dilla is the founder of Chicago Mahogany Tours, a bus tour dedicated to highlighting the city's history and impact. So welcome to Bronzeville. Let's have a round of applause for Bronzeville. At the end of the tour, you will agree with me that everything dope about America comes from Chicago, okay? Then I sit down with Dilla for a conversation about Bronzeville's bright future and how travelers can support it. There's uh, such an amazing resurgence going on here now. It's what was formerly the Black Metropolis, and, and now it's returning to be uh, a metropolis, but uh, a metropolis more inclusive to the people that are here. Chicago is a city of neighborhoods. 77 to be exact. And each one boasts its own character, style, and things to do. But for a true piece of Chicago history, you have to head four miles south of downtown to Bronzeville. Bronzeville is such a gem of a place. It's very hidden, but we have everything here. It's a real neighborhood with a lot of heart. It feels like you never met a stranger when you come to Bronzeville. Cultured and historical. We have such a rich history here in Bronzeville of African-American oh, yeah. journalists yeah. to business people. Bronzeville, Black-owned restaurants, cafes, establishments are a must when you visit my beloved hometown of Chicago. Bronzeville is getting its flowers both nationally and globally, and it's thanks in part to Della Thomas, who started creating quick Chicago history videos on TikTok for fun and then went viral. Yo, what's up? It's your favorite neighborhood historian, Dylan. I personally know that everything dope about America was either made in or made better by Chicago. Let me give you a couple of examples. I think it's the connection to the stories I tell on social media. You may want to come physically see that. So Dilla started his Chicago tours. Now, while he offers tours of neighborhoods across Chicago, his Bronzeville tour remains the most popular. We sent a producer to join the historic tour before I sat down with Dilla to talk about Bronzeville today. And let me tell you, it has me hyped to go see Bronzeville for myself. So my name is Dilla. I fancy myself a Chicago historian. Uh, born and raised in this amazing city. Uh, grew up on the south side. Went to One thing about Dilla, he commands the front of the tour bus with ease. And it comes as no surprise. As a father of seven, he's used to engaging a crowd with a good joke or story. Uh, I'm the son of a Chicago police officer. My dad was a cop for 32 years in this city. So if you couldn't tell him that here in Chicago, on the west side of the street, the number's in an even number, he couldn't touch his car. And so to be able to use his car, I learned the Chicago street grid, uh, so that way I could pass all his tests. Dilla often chooses the exact route of his Bronzeville tour based on the mood of the passengers and traffic. Today, that means driving down 47th Street toward Martin Luther King Drive, a road steeped in history. Heading on King Drive, Chicago is the first city in this country to name a street after the slain civil rights icon. Dr. King was sadly killed April 4th, 1968. We changed the name of South Parkway Boulevard in July of 1968. So we were 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. moved to Chicago's West Side in 1965 to lead the Chicago Freedom Movement. It was a campaign that focused on fair housing for Chicago's black community. And so the black folks in Bronzeville sat in the middle of neighborhoods that had restrictive racial covenants, so black folks couldn't live anywhere else. Forced to plant roots in Bronzeville, the neighborhood became a safe haven for Chicago's black community. Here, black business boomed, and as a result, a cultural renaissance was unleashed. So the Chicago Blues District runs between 47th Street and 43rd Street. Both sides of the street had very awesome blues clubs and very inactivations. Uh, raise your hand if you've been to New Orleans. Uh, the whole bus been to New Orleans. Now, I'm not saying that jazz was not invented in New Orleans. It was, but it was not called jazz. In the 1900s, the mayor of New Orleans said that black folks could no longer perform in public. So these players moved to Chicago to perform here. They go have a show at the Palm Cafe. The Chicago Tribune writer goes to hear the show. The Tribune writer thought the show sucked. So he said it sounded like a bunch of jazz in my ear. The musicians thought that that was the coolest word ever. So they started calling their music jazz. So Chicago didn't give birth to jazz, but we certainly named it. And I think that name is dope. Bronzeville was home to some of the top jazz musicians of all time. Greats like Nat King Cole and Dinah Washington all lived here. And by the way, that's Louis Armstrong's home. Has the horns in the window, has the Chicago Tribune sign. Music thrived in the creative energy of Bronzeville. Blues musicians like Muddy Waters mixed with soul and rock artists to create entirely new musical subgenres like the electric Chicago blues. With the sounds of Bronzeville's blues district ringing in our ears, we cut a few blocks west to Indiana Avenue and drive up to 33rd Street to our next iconic music stop, Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. So let me tell you about the National Museum of Gospel Music. There's this gentleman by the name of Thomas Dorsey. He was a percussionist. He fell in love and got married. Sadly, his girl died during childbirth when his son passed in the night. And so when his heart tore up, he wrote like an activation of God. So he sat at his piano and he played a slow jazz melody. And that moment in time is considered the birth of gospel music for this country. Today we call that song Precious Lord. It has a lot to do with this space. We leave the cradle of gospel music to head to our next stop. For the first time on the tour, Dilla puts down the microphone and invites the group to join him off the bus. Please read the tablets inside of the monument. I will join you over there. The tour gathers around an interpretive bronze and marble sculpture with three sturdy legs at its base and a flame-like shape that reaches into the sky. But we're here because this is the first monument in the city of Chicago officially designated to an African-American woman. It's Ida B. Wells Barnett. Ida B. Wells Barnett brought her crusading spirit to Chicago in 1893. If you read this amazing tablet, the thing I like to point out is that one, sadly she was born into chattel slavery. She was freed via the Civil War. And then this calls her a pioneering data journalist. Hey Dilla, what is that? Well, basically, she would hear about a family and she would travel to that city so she could get the first person's story. She would always write those stories under a pen name until she was discovered, and that's what sent her to Chicago. Here, the journalist and civil rights activist founded Chicago's first ever Black women's suffrage club. Ida B. Wells Barnett also devoted herself to educating her city's youth. She opened Chicago's first kindergarten for Black children in 1897. And today, her commitment to education lives on in Dilla's tour. Now, brown girls are learning about the very awesome Ida B. Wells Barnett. So that's the reason I make people get off the tour on Bronzeville, only here. We have to honor public people in public spaces for the benefit of us all. All of the work that Dilla does to preserve Bronzeville's past is in deep service of building a bright future. He's able to show a glimpse of what that might look like with the last stop on his tour. And then if you're not in a rush, get some awesome wine from the Bronzeville Winery. Bronzeville Winery co-founder Cecilia Cuff is central to creating a 21st century version of the metropolis we just toured. 
We knew that coming together as a community was something that was really needed, especially on the south side of Chicago. Cecilia teamed up with Eric Williams, another leading Black entrepreneur in Chicago, to open Bronzeville Winery as a space that's fiercely by and for community. We now proudly have a list that's about 75% either minority or female owned for our wines, beers, and spirits, many of them right around our corner. When we started to think about the build out of the space, we thought about how do we create community reciprocity. So what that meant to us was how many local jobs can we create? I think we were very thoughtful about the way we wanted to drink wine as a community. On any given day, Bronzeville Winery is buzzing with activity. It's become a beloved watering hole for drinking and dining, being in community, and connecting across the table from generation to generation. What feels very centered and rooted is that we'll see people who have been here generationally for 50, 60, 70 years, and they're able to share their accounts of what they never thought they would see again in their own community and to articulate what the rewriting of the history of Bronzeville looks like. Dilla heads from Bronzeville Winery to the DeSable Museum of African American History to join me for a full circle conversation. We discuss the impact that Bronzeville has had, not only on Chicago, but globally. And we talk about the history that's continuing to be made here today. You are known as Chicago's favorite neighborhood historian. What does it mean to you that you've essentially been given this, this title? Like, how does that feel? feel. It's very humbling. I feel very much connected to Chicago. My mom was a nurse here, a public school educated. The entirety of my life, if a book had the name Chicago in it, we couldn't leave the store unless I had it. So I, I don't think I understood that I was preparing myself for this, but I, I'm very much well studied and, and well versed in Chicago history. So very much a cultural ambassador. Yeah. And I think I'm fortunate enough that my life's experience has allowed me to work in Chinatown, to work in the Polish downtown, to work in the Puerto Rican neighborhood of Paseo Boricua, to work in the Irish neighborhood of Bridgeport, to work in the Japanese neighborhood on Argyle Street. And so... As a black dude that loves Jordans, I also have an appreciation for everybody's Chicago story because of the amount of time I've gotten to spend with people and learn their Chicago stories. And then it just dawned on me that a lot of things that we love come from Chicago. You know, they're playing the Chicago style of blues in, in Tel Aviv. In Paris, all of the black luminaries will welcome in open arms Josephine Bakers and others in the 30s. So we're very much world citizens, and I just want to do my part. Yeah, there isn't just a single story of Chicago, and Bronzeville absolutely stands out. Let's talk about what it's like right now. What is Bronzeville today? We have churches, we have uh, businesses, Black-owned businesses. What does that look like to the traveler who is literally in the streets? So there are a number of black businesses that align our east and west arterial streets here in Bronzeville. So you're going to smell barbecue. You're going to see people coming out of coffee shops. You're going to hear varying types of music, right? You'll hear hip hop, jazz, drill, blues. We're out there jamming and doing the salsa as well in Bronzeville. And then I would say you're also going to see a lot of art, beautiful murals and art activations that highlight the rich history of the space. You know what I love about your description is that there's so many things going on. You talked a lot about, I guess, the multicultural nature of the neighborhoods. It's not culture that's monolithic, right? So it's actually really multifaceted. And that's something that I can appreciate. You know, if I'm there for an afternoon, like, what do I need to hit up? We always have to start with food. You need to go to Chicago Chicken and Waffles. And then there's the Rosenwald Courts. Um, a gentleman by the name of Julius Rosenwald, who's the chairman of Sears Roebuck and Company back in the 19 teens and 20s, he became good friends with Booker T. Washington, and he discovered that African Americans didn't have a place to stay. So he bought an entire city block, knocked down all the property, and, and built what's probably like a 150-unit building. Today it's called the Rosenwald Courts. Every single person in Bronzeville knows where that is, and it's, it's a very architecturally beautiful place. So I would say those are the places you for sure, for sure have to hit up. Then you need to go to Honey's Barbecue for lunch. Washington Park is one of the parks that was designed by the same dudes that designed Central Park, the Olmstead Brothers. So uh, I would say those are great places to start. If you were to write the next chapters of the Book of Bronzeville, what stories would you want to fill those pages with? Goodness. Um, 
I hope that we are able to become innovative and allow for new spaces to be built while at the same time, Hope Bronzeville continues to keep the historic buildings that we have, preserve the history that we have in order for it to be shared for future generations. And then lastly, I would simply just like for Bronzeville to be thought of as much as one thinks of visiting Navy Pier or one comes to Chicago and wants to visit Wicker Park or Lincoln Park. Um, you know, I want you to come to Hyde Park. I want you to go see where Michelle Obama and Barack Obama lived. I want you to go uh, do those normal Chicago things. But I want Bronzeville to be thought of in those same veins. Well, you know what, Dilla, you are certainly putting Bronzeville on the map with your amazing storytelling and your tour. So thank you so much for joining us. This has been such a lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. After the conversation wrapped, I stayed on the line for a bit longer with our editorial director, Robin, to share what we took away from our time with Dilla. He was yeah. great. So passionate. And his yeah. um, his storytelling, it's not just like a one-way storytelling. Yeah. So, I yeah, love how he loves just- work connected Bronzeville to the larger Chicago story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because so often with these major metropolises, you lose like the greater area, the greater Miami area, the greater Toronto area, the greater Chicago area. And so these really large neighborhoods and impactful neighborhoods are lost in the sauce, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that we're able to kind of like grab out you know, the story of this particular place, which is very uh, significant and very important historically and culturally. That's all for this episode of About the Journey. Thank you so much to our Bronzeville guide, Della Thomas. Next week, we're headed to Berlin, to the neighborhood of Kreuzberg for our season finale. We're diving headfirst into the city's burgeoning, women-driven culinary scene. And, you know, now we have like a lot of females in the food scene. And surprisingly, a lot of them are here. About the Journey is produced by Marriott Bonvoy Traveler, Atwill Media, and me, Onega Raymond. Our Marriott producers are Robin Benfield and Valerie Connors. Our Atwill Media producers are Kate Walsh, Christy Westgard, Gail Straub, and Elliot Davis. Mixing and original theme music by Andrew Holtzberger. Learn more about Dilla Thomas and follow along with him on TikTok at Six Figure Dilla. Find out more about Chicago Mahogany Tours at chicagomahogany.com. You can learn more about visiting Bronzeville and how to travel more meaningfully from Marriott Bonvoy Traveler at traveler.marriott.com. Stay, explore, and discover the unexpected with Marriott Bonvoy's 30-plus hotel brands and over 8,000 hotels in cities around the world. And if you like this episode of About the Journey, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Onika Raymond. See you next time.